Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the McFarlane DC Multiverse Detective Batman, but the blue and gray variant. Now this is an ongoing variant from the first Batman they released, Detective Comics number 1000 Batman. This is done in the sort of 70s style, blue and gray. This figure has been spotted at Walmart several times on a display with Wonder Woman. And I've been hitting my Walmarts up a couple times a week with no success here. I found the code for Wonder Woman. I was using BrickSeek to try to locate the display. No success. I'm sure we'll get them here eventually. I reached out to a couple of buddies online that I know live across the country. And one was able to find this figure for me. I really appreciate that. He's actually the guy that makes my commissioned customs as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging here. But really quick before we do that, I did want to mention they're also making a blue and gray variant of the Batman They Made series Batman, but that has not been spotted in the wild yet. So, the top of the package, 22 moving parts, McFarlane toys, age 12 plus. Here's the figure. Now this is the exact same mold as the Detective Comics Batman. I know some people were disappointed with how small the head was, the kind of bulky torso articulation. None of that has changed, just FYI. But he's in that blue and gray classic Batman color. Got the oval in the middle, grapnel gun, batarang, stand in the background, collector's card back there, DC Multiverse Batman. One side here, it says Batman Detective Comics 1000. On the other side, it simply says Batman. The bottom here, there is a barcode in case that helps anybody. I wasn't having luck with brick seat on this barcode. I noticed that top there it says DC Wave 2 Modern Batman Alternate. And on the back side here, we've got an image of Detective Comics 1000, and then several other figures from the first assortment Nightwing, Hellbat. John Stewart, Green Lantern, The Man Who Laughs, and Harley Quinn. So with no further ado, let's open them up. And I did end up getting two of these figures. One of them to open up and enjoy, and one of them to keep in my complete, unopened 6 and 7 inch Batman action figure collection. And here is my unopened version of this figure. Taking its rightful place with my other unopened Batman characters. In front of my Batman related comics. Here he is with the entire McFarlane collection, Batman related that is. Alright, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. He does have a collector's card, a display stand, a batarang, and a grapnel gun. Absolutely everything is identical to the previous release, from the accessories to the sculpt of the figure. It is simply a paint variant, and it's a good one at that. Mattel and DC Direct have made tons and tons of different paint variants of the same Batman sculpt. This is McFarlane's first one, and I'm okay with that. I'm not going to be too judgmental. I really do like this blue and gray classic bat scheme. So let's go and take a look at the figure. Starting with his head here, yes, it's a little small by himself. It's not quite as noticeable, but put him around some other figures, and it sure is. Cape draped over the shoulders. Going to hinder a little bit of the articulation, but it is soft. You can pull it up. He's got that classic bat symbol on his chest. Really like that. Just the absolute classicness. I know a lot of people hate his torso. I don't mind it too much. It does give you a lot of range of motion, but it does look a little bit awkward. Love the belt, the capsules. Did I say classic before? Blue trunks. Blue gauntlets. Double joint elbows, double joint knees. Got that sort of ball joint in his ankle that I'm really not that fond of. Overall, I'm happy to have gotten one of these. Now, let's look at his accessories. Let's start off with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand. This thing is a perfect circle. It's got the DC logo on the bottom. It's got one peg for the peg holes on their feet and it's rather thin and basic. Then there's his collector's card. This is kind of shiny, not exactly like a hologram, but if you get it from a certain angle, it's really dark looking. Joker seems to stand out no matter what though. The front here is Detective Comics number 1000. 
on the back, a bunch of stats on Batman. Here is this variance collector's card on the left, next to the original collector's card. So here's the collector's card this Batman came with, and here's the cover of Detective Comics number 1000. Now let's look at his Batarang. This thing here is shaped like the bat symbol, has the two ears at the top. It's pretty thick, and it's made of kind of rubber. You can bend it just a little bit. Here's this Batman holding, getting ready to throw his Batarang. And this is just about as high as you're going to get his arm to go up. You can get a little higher. Luckily his cape is soft and doesn't obstruct it too much. It can go higher than I would have expected looking at this thing. And here's his grapnel gun. We've got the gun part followed with a line and a little Batman hook at the end. Overall, not too bad detail wise. A lot of sculpting detail. I personally would have preferred it if they made this hook have a little peg so you could attach it or remove it. That would have been nice. Here he is holding his grapnel launcher, aiming it upward. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, next let's check out the height of this figure. So from bottom to the top of his head, sitting at right about 7.1 inches, which will translate to about 18 centimeters. And if you go to the top of the ears, about 7.25 inches. Now let's look at his articulation. So, starting with his head here, it can rotate around, no problem. He can look down this far, which is pretty nice, and up that far, which is decent. His shoulders are on a ball joint. They can go out more than 90 degrees, which is pretty nice. Obstructed by the cape a little bit. Up, down, around, all that good stuff. He also has a butterfly joint. That bit of material between his chest and shoulder area allows his arms to go in and out even more. Below that, he's got a bicep cut, double jointed elbows, then go pretty much all the way in there. His wrist here has a ball between the forearm and hand. It can rotate at the top and it can rotate at the base as well. And it's hinged. And if you want to change where the hinge is, you can sort of hold it in place, rotate the hand, and it's going to be hinged differently. He's got a big ball joint his torso here, rotate around, it can also go forward and back. He's got another ball joint above his belt at the base here, can rotate a little bit less, and it can also f go forward and back, giving him a huge range of motion in his torso area. He can completely do the splits. He does not have a ball joint there, but it's a similar type of concept. His leg can move independently of it, but just a hair around there. Legs can afford this much, which is pretty nice. If you had a cloth cape, he'd be able to sit down, but not with this cape. Back, not too far. He's got double jointed knees, go all the way back as well. He's got a ball between his shin and foot, very similar to his wrist. Can rotate at the top, can rotate at the bottom, can go up and down to articulation as well. And if you wanted to have him rock, because it doesn't do it right now, you can rotate the ball around, put his foot back, and then it's able to rock. I'm not a big fan of these ball joints in his ankles. They're kind of pain in the ass to do everything you can do. This guy's here is a lot looser. I'm able to move it around a lot better than some of the past releases. Now I'd like to look at the reuse and see if there's any sculpting differences from the previous Detective Comics number 1000 to Batman. So their feet, legs, identical, crotch area is identical, looks like the belts are different, so they swapped out the belts. The only other real difference with these guys is going to be the top part of their torso, the bat signal. Now in both these guys, the bat signal is actually sculpted on there, you can feel the difference. So it makes me think they probably had a torso here with a completely unsculpted area, and they just simply added this here, added this here. I have no problem with the way that looks. Pretty sure Superman uses the same torso as well. Here he is in the Batcave using the Bat computer. Here he is on the rooftop in Gotham City in front of an advertisement. Here he is perched on a gargoyle. Here's Batman taking out some henchmen or muscle on another rooftop in Gotham. 
Next, let's check him out compared with some other action figures. Starting off with some other McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here he is next to all the other Batmans from the McFarlane line. From left to right, we've got the Batman who laughs. And even though technically I believe that's Bruce Wayne from another universe, I don't really consider him a Batman. Then we've got the Batman They Made series Batman. Then the blue and gray Detective Comics Batman. In the back there, Batman in his Hellbat armor. Then the standard Detective Comics Batman. And on the far right, the Arkham Asylum Batman. Very soon, we're going to get a White Knight Batman. I'm crazy excited for that wave. And we're also going to get a blue and gray Batman the Animated Series variant. Here is the entire McFarlane DC Multiverse collection so far. We've got 17 figures and one vehicle. We know the next three figures are going to be Batman, Azrael, and the Joker from White Knight. And then we've got four Dark Knight Metal figures coming. And there are a lot of rumors about a ton of cool stuff coming after that, including at least a vehicle. Here he is riding on the Bat Raptor. Now let's look at him next to some other blue and gray Batman figures. Here he is next to NECA's version of a blue and gray Batman. And what a beautiful figure this is. Then next to a bunch of Mezco blue and gray Batman figures. And here, with a bunch of DC Direct and DC Collectibles blue and gray Batman figures. And here, with a whole bunch of Mattel blue and gray Batman figures. Next, let's check them out compared with some other action figure lines from different various companies to see how he fits in, both scale and style-wise, in case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. And I'll be focusing my comparisons on Batman figures when possible. Here he is, next to some of his McFarlane Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarlane Toys. And here he is with some more McFarlane Toys. These other four are from McFarlane video game lines. Then, with some DST or Diamond Select Toys. Now, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, with some NECA figures. Then, with some Mattel wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112th cloth soft goods action figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to some Mafex figures. And some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And then, here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. And some Jazzwares figures. So overall, this is a pretty nice figure, but he's a little bit underwhelming. We've already gotten this exact same sculpt many months ago, and there's really nothing new to offer with this guy. I'm a big fan of the classic colors, the blue, the gray, the bat. One of my favorite looks of Batman over the years. If I were to rate this guy, I'd go ahead and give him a 7 out of 10. That's the same rating I gave the original Detective Comics Batman but it is pretty much essentially the same figure. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.